Hello guys, M97 here once again and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're gonna be taking a look at how to put an Iron Man helmet in your head using 3ds Max and After Effects together with Element 3D so it sticks and makes you look like Tony Stark. Anyway... Okay, so the idea is pretty straightforward. You shoot your video, put it into your computer, track your head movement, and then import it back in 3ds Max or After Effects to slap that Iron Man helmet on. But you may be wondering, how do I do it step by step? Well, that's what we're here for today. Now, before we start off, I just want to point out some things that you should be looking out for before you shoot your video. For example, here you can see me putting some track markers on. That way, the tracking software will have a better and easier time tracking your footage. Now, you can use pretty much any black marker that you can find. I, I use this. This is like girls use, I don't even know what they call them. Next up is shutter speed, which is controlled through your camera. And basically, the higher the shutter speed, the less blurry moving objects are gonna be. That way, your tracking software will have an easier time tracking since your footage is gonna be crisp and sharp. Okay, so that's pretty much the basic idea. So let's jump right in and get started. Okay, so here we are now in After Effects. And we're gonna start off by dragging our footage into a new comp. And let's set the resolution to 720p instead of 1080 so it's a little bit faster just for the sake of this tutorial and we're gonna right click make it fit to comp now we can scroll through time now and uh, trim it down to where you want to begin and end so around around here seems fine I'm gonna select the footage alt open bracket to trim it there and scroll down alt close bracket to trim it in the end now uh there's a shortcut for uh, trimming the work area as well. There's a B for beginning and N for the end. So let's just go to the end here and click N and right click trim comp to work area. Now we're going to go ahead and export this as a JPEG sequence since Buju uh, supports JPEG sequences and if I'm not mistaken dot MOV files as well. So let's select the comp, go to composition, add to render queue. And let's set the format to JPEG sequence, hit OK, set our destination. See, I already uh, rendered this out. So let's uh, create a new folder, name it whatever you want, hit save and render. Moving on to Bushu, we're going to go ahead and import our sequence. Let's find the destination. Oops. And uh, I forgot to tell you, always make sure to select the first frame when you're importing a sequence. And uh, let's just change a few things here. Uh, the move type, we're gonna leave it at free move. And the frame rate, uh, Bougie uh, tends to have a problem with 23.976. So let's just set it at 24. And uh, we, we didn't really change anything, did we? Yeah. Okay, now before you hit okay, you're gonna hit uh, apply first and there's this glitch that uh, happens whenever you hit apply uh, the frame rate just resets to like 25 frames I don't know why it does that we're just gonna set it back to 24 and now hit OK okay so here we have our footage and we're gonna go ahead and mask around the face so it only tracks the face now not like uh, it's not like anything anything is moving in the background but it'll just uh, give Buju a much easier task. So let's go select the mask tool. I'm going to mask around the area, the, the face area. And I'll be back once I'm done. So I'm finally done with the masking. I've been working on this for the past 10 years now. And let me tell you, anything visual effects related, rotoscoping is my least favorite thing. But no, it just took me like two minutes. Just a rough mask. And you don't have to be perfect with it, just a rough mask will do just fine. So uh, there's that. Now before we go ahead and click track features, we're gonna go right click and invert mask. That way it masks around the scene and not the face. So let's just click track features now. 
uh, all frames and hit start. See what that does. Now one more thing I want to point out uh, when you shoot stuff like this is that you want to have as less facial movement as possible because uh, say you raise your eyebrows or move your lips or even raise your cheeks then it'll mess up with the tracking and make your helmet like just wobble and shake around so one more thing to keep in mind okay so now that the tracking is done we're gonna go ahead and click camera solve and uh, select all frames hit start so for some reason the tracking is all wiggly and stuff and over here it actually goes completely off now in the original video I think I included the ears as well so let me try that out and I'll be back so it seems like that was actually the case now you can see the track is a lot smoother now a lot better everything sticks the way it should and uh, we can move on okay so let's just go ahead uh, go to the task view in the under the masks delete that mask go back to the toodle box and uh, we're gonna bring up the scene geometry and we're gonna click around the middle here click add cordon from hint and we're just gonna set that to origin and connect to selected so what that's gonna do is actually just make it the like the center of the scene that way the the null objects in after effects are gonna be pretty well aligned so we're gonna go ahead and click export camera now let's say after effects Maya uh, scale is seen by maybe a hundred so the null objects aren't like too small and uh, we're gonna go ahead and actually export all of them even though it might slow down the process a little bit but it doesn't matter so let's set a destination hit save now before we move back to After Effects I just want to show you around a little bit on this uh, on this uh, Iron Man helmet I found online now I lost the link to the original creator because I'm I didn't create this but I'll try to find it and uh, give credit to him in the description and it's kind of slow when I orbit around since if I hit 7 you see there's like 200,000 polys but this is a pretty good model and uh, I also rigged it a little bit like uh, link the front part to this rectangle so we can just move it around and then move the box and it'll move all together if you're planning on animating here in 3ds max but what we're gonna do is go up here export and um, just name it Iron Man helmet and you want to make sure you export it as an OBJ file because that's what uh, element 3d reads and let's click save and uh, also before we hit export the faces element 3d prefers triangles so let's set it to triangles uh, make sure uh, you check export materials as well and hit export okay moving back to after effects we're gonna double click here and just search for the uh, export data click open and it's gonna create a new comp for us so we're gonna open that up and you can see all the null objects uh, rotating around and it's kind of forming like a face so what we're gonna do is go back to the footage comp we're gonna select the footage edit copy go back to the track comp edit paste and just paste our uh, our footage here and we're gonna turn this uh, off the adaptive resolution so when we're scrolling through it doesn't just uh, give us a pixelated look and uh, if you run into this problem where it just uh, it's kind of off so it's kind of sliding we can just go back we can just go down here and just click uh, select the camera click U so that'll bring up all the keyframes and as you can see here in the end there's a gap of no keyframes at all so that means it's kind of off by like I don't know seven frames like seven frames a lot so we're just gonna line that up uh, it's eating seven frames I don't know why I did that I don't know why uh, the first seven frames were not exported but we're just gonna run with it uh, let's click B uh, as I mentioned earlier to trim the comp with the work area sorry and as you can see now it's exactly where it should be now uh, we can also go ahead and select all the null objects 
hit S and maybe scale it up to 10. And also, there's this option if you select them all again and hit F4. It'll bring up these lines here. And if you click that, what we can do now is hide all layers that have the shy layer enabled. So basically, if we click that, uh, since we made uh, all the null objects shy, it'll just hide them and uh, give us more room to work with. Okay, so uh, we pretty much have uh, all the track in place. We're gonna go ahead, create a new solid now and uh, name it element 3D. And uh, let's go right click, effect, video copilot and element. Go to the scene setup, click import and uh, there's the object that we exported. Let's just maximize our window. And you can see here we have three textures. There's one for the red, one for the yellow, and one for the eyes. Yeah, let's just rename that just so that we're more organized. And uh, what we're gonna do is, what I did is actually I used the, the shiny material, I think. Just put that on red. Yeah, I think I used this one, but I, I decreased the intensity of the reflection like around 60% maybe. And uh, if we change the color here, just like a dark red, yeah, that seems fine. And then the yellow as well, just bring that in. Just make it yellow, orangish kind of-ish. Not gonna try to be perfect. Let's just decrease the intensity of the reflection here as well. Now for the eyes, what I did is just left it as a default material, but scroll down and you can see under the illumination tab, you can just crank up the intensity at 100 and you can even go higher, but you don't need to. And the eyes are basically just complete white now. So when we hit okay and go under the render settings and the glow, we can turn on the glow and we can say glow from illumination instead of luminance. And that way we have much more control over the color, the intensity and all that stuff. And it doesn't like completely make the helmet glow as well. Uh, the same goes with a stylized glow. It has the same effect if we uh, turn this back off. It just makes the entire helmet glow and it's a lot slower as well. So we're going to just delete that and uh, let's just uh, leave it off for now and go back up. Now, the way we can fix the position of the helmet, since, since uh, you can see it's kind of following the head, but it's not positioned correctly. So let's unhide the shy null layers from uh, before. And let's just find a, like, uh, a null in the middle. That one seems fine. And we're gonna click P for position. And we're gonna copy the values from this null object over to the helmet. So uh, I think we pretty much just need the Z position so we're gonna copy that go over to group one particle replicator and position Z just paste it there and uh, we can play around with the X actually I just copy all the values and it's pretty much on the head now but we're gonna have to go to particle look maybe scale the size scale it down rotation there you go. And you just need to play around until you find the right position and rotation. Okay, now just for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna leave it simple, even though the head can be seen and all that stuff. There you go, there you go. One of the things I did was also added a shadow around the neck area, and I'm not gonna waste another 10 years trying to rotoscope it out again, but let me just hide these nulls. I'll just uh, show you real quick how I did it. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, right click, go new, solid, I'm gonna call this matte shadow. And we're gonna use this as a kind of a cutoff on the chest. So basically, it's gonna serve as a mat. So whatever we put on the chest, it's not gonna go outside and affect the wall or the, the doors and all that stuff. So let's just turn off the, the helmet for now. And we're gonna do a quick masking. And now what we're gonna do is actually create a new solid and name this shadow. 
and just bring it below the matte shadow, turn it on, hit F4 to bring up the track matte and just set it as alpha matte. You can see what that does and now we can add masks to the shadow like say for example like that and there you go now of course it's a bit too intense maybe something like that and that just uh, helps it look a little bit better now the helmet is not looking really good right now so let's scroll down to the render settings let's start off by first uh, enabling the glow uh, something that's bothering me is these null objects so you can go ahead and hit Control shift h to turn off all the UI that way it's uh, easier to see let's start off with a glow one more thing we can do is uh, find the environment and uh, we're gonna have to rotate that because it's kind of not fitting the scene because the light is coming from the left side if we rotate it in the X something like that of course you're gonna have to play around with it yourself but you know just so we get it to look a little bit prettier now that I think about it, the yellow part, I think it needs just a little bit more reflection. So let's scroll down, find the reflection. We can also turn on the ambient occlusion, which will give it even more detail. At this point, you can experiment yourself, get the look that you want. The, the hardest part was basically the tracking. So as soon as you figure that out, from then on, it's just trial and error. Also, there's uh, sampling and aliasing. Okay, so I've gone ahead and messed around with the settings a little bit, the glow, the colors and all that stuff. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, from now on, you just have to like, maybe, you know, add some grading. You can even add, let me just uh, add a curve real quick. Add some contrast. Give it some blue. all that stuff and just to make it like blend a little bit with the background you can add an effect of noise on the helmet just zoom in we can see better maybe four well, that's a lot three that way you can see it kind of blends with the background a little bit more so i think that's pretty much it so as always if you have any questions make sure to leave them down below in the comment section and i'll see you next time